after we have set up our data warehouse, it may happen that the business users in some situations may experience a bad query performance. This means that they would have to wait very long for their results and their reports. And also if they want to work on the database, they have to just wait very long until the data is retrieved. And in such cases, the first thing that we want to think about when we want to improve the performance of our queries is to use indexes. And that's why in the following lectures, we want to first talk about what are actually indexes. So how do they work and why do they help us with the performance of our data warehouse? Then we want to talk about what are the different types of indexes. And in the end, we then also want to lay out some guidelines on how we should go about using these indexes in a practical way. So that's why we first want to start with what are actually indexes and why do they help us. So to understand that, we first need to understand that in a database, in a given table, the data is not stored in a systematic order, but just wherever there's some free space available. So there's no particular order, just how it can be arranged on the disk space. And this is then a little bit problematic if we are trying trying to retrieve the data. So of course it's very efficient if the data is written, but if we now want to retrieve that data, for example, we want to filter just based on one specific customer, then the query has to scan the entire table. So it has to go through all of the different rows and search for query number five. And also if it finds one, how do we know that there's no more search required? Maybe we have already found all of them, but still the query needs to scan the entire table. So this is a full table scan and it's very inefficient in terms of getting the data out. And that is why we want to use indexes. So those indexes are basically storing the data in a specific order. So for example, if we place an index on the customer ID, this will be in a particular order and we can then just find a pointer basically. So for example, the value four for the customer ID is in location, so row ID number one. Then we have value number five. This starts at row number two. And then the next value for the customer ID is eight. And this starts then at the location number five. So this is how we have then pointers that just help to find where are the specific rows stored so that we don't need a full table scan, but we can just directly go to the location and with that we can read the data much quicker. So this is the use of indexes. They help us to make the data retrievals faster because we don't need to do a full table scan anymore. And oftentimes, in particular in large tables, the full table scan is what takes up most of the query time till the data is retrieved. And that's why optimizing that can be very helpful. On the other side, there is also downsides to these indexes because they, for example, make writing the data and updating the data much slower because now also the key needs to be maintained and we can now not write the data just wherever we want to. And on top of that, there's also some additional storage needed. So if we put many different indexes, this can be sometimes quite a lot of storage actually that is needed on top of that. So therefore we now want to talk about different keys that we can use and how we should use them. And in particular, in our case, we talk about so-called B3 indexes. Those are basically the standard indexes. And then there are also so-called bitmap indexes. And they are particularly helpful for data warehouses. And we now want to understand what are these different indexes? How do they work? How do they differ? And that's why we want to in the next lecture have a closer look at how those two different types of indexes work and how we should use them. So that's what we are doing in the next lecture.
In the previous lecture, we've seen that indexes can help us to make data reading faster, especially if the data needs to be filtered so that we can avoid full table scans. So that's why we first want to now start with the first type of index, which is the B tree index. As mentioned, this is the standard index. So if there's no particular type of index mentioned, we usually talk about this B tree index. And this is just a multi-level tree structure that is just using a tree logic to break the data down into different pages or blocks. So for example, if we put an index on a name of a person, this can be broken down by the first character. And then we have, for example, the first character is an A. Then we look at the second character. If the second is then a B, then this can be broken down even more. And then on top of those, values we also of course have the information where is this data stored so the row number is also then included so for example in here if we want to look at adam we have aed we should start looking at row id number 20 and like this we can just break down our data in pages and blocks with this tree structure and like this avoid our full table scans. So this type of tree is used usually if we have usually unique values in our column. So oftentimes it is a surrogate key, our primary key that is just containing unique values. That means every single value occurs only once. So we have a very high range of different values. This means we have a high cardinality, just a high range of values. And we should note that we should never put an index just blindly on all columns in our tables because we have seen that there are some downsides like cost in terms of storage, in terms of update and insert operations. And this is why we later on, of course, also want to talk about these guidelines. But now we first want to also talk about the so-called bitmap index because this has some advantages in our case if we are working in a data warehouse. And that's why in the next lecture we want to talk about the bitmap index. In the last lecture we've learned about the B-tree index which is the standard index. But now there's also the so-called bitmap index which is a special type of index that can be especially good if we are working on a data warehouse. So this is a type of index that is beneficial, especially for large amounts of data in combination with a low cardinality. So for example, if we have only a few different values in our table, but the table itself is huge. So for example, one column can only take three different values or maybe only two different values, then this is a low cardinality and then a bitmap index is a good choice in our data warehouse because it, the benefit of that is since the data is stored in so-called bits we will see later on how this works in a little bit more detail it is very storage efficient and on top of that it is also very good for the read performance with the downside that it is not so efficient for our data manipulation. So if the data needs to be updated or inserted, in this case it is not so efficient, but we can basically live with that a lot better because we are in a data warehouse and the most part is getting the data out, so reading the data. And that's why a bitmap index is usually a very good choice if we have a low cardinality in our data warehouse. But now, how does this bitmap index work? So we have this table and of course, we now also want to create a structure that helps us to avoid full table scans. And in this case, we don't use a list, but we use bits. So this can look something like this. We have the different payment types and we see that there are only two different types in our case. And this is why we can now create different maps basically that are telling us in which rows we find which values. 
So for example, for the value visa, we can find this value in row number one because there's a one and in row number two, also because there's also a one in row number three there's also a one and then in the next row we see that in row number four there is a zero and that's why we cannot find the value visa but if we now go to the value mastercard we find in row number four yes it is turned to one that means yes there is a value mastercard and this is then how basically there can be a map created that helps to find in which rows we find which value and as mentioned this is a very good strategy if we have not so many repeating values because then this is a very efficient method so now that we have had a quick introduction into those two different types of indexes we now also quickly want to get some guidelines on how we should go about using those indexes for which columns in which tables in what situations do we want to use which of those indexes so that's what we are doing in the next lecture